Okay, Eileen here doing the fourth and final video of the night. Um, this one focusing on discussions for learning. And um, along with the Stephen Chu video, we have an orienting article for this one, and it's by Kimberly Tanner, um, focusing on what she calls talking to learn. Um, I have called it speaking to learn as a part of reading, writing, drawing, and speaking to learn as a cluster of things that we often need to teach our students at the next levels they move up to when they move from high school to college, from gen ed to discipline to advanced capstone-like courses and on to um, graduate work. And Tanner does a really nice job of setting out the case for talking in a classroom and its role in learning and retrieval and in application and in comparison. She also does a really nice job of setting out some of the barriers and difficulties to have in mind, and they may resonate with you and you, as you think of your own class. And then we've offered readings that fall into two categories. And here we're gonna ask you to pick one of those categories. And one might be thinking about jigsaw discussions. And a jigsaw simply means that it's a way that you can take something like four distinct readings, have students complete and do close reading of one of those, become experts in that one article, and then mix up and mingle with the other experts to talk more. Jigsaws actually grows out of um, work in Texas in post-desegregation, so the 1960s and 70s was the bulk of that work, to make classrooms a place where newly integrated students and newly desegregated um, communities could come together and see the people who were learners in the class as experts to really work at that angle of learners here are all experts and <clears throat> helping them to be responsible and grow those skills in a way that grew discussion that had more perspectives and that was grounded to particular articles and ways of seeing the world and also discussion prompts and a final synthesizing prompt. So you'll find some resources on um, jigsaw discussions. Some of the really great ones, because this is where the research money um, is at at the moment, are linked to science. Each and every one of those, as I've said in some other videos, I have stolen from in doing my humanities and social science oriented work. The second place we've clustered things together is for thinking about discussions in an online space. And there we've shared three examples with you of ways that people have thought about this who are local teachers and also one who's a more internationally known um, researcher in terms of getting students to reflect on, on discussion. So one piece you'll find there is by Mara Lee Brommer, who's a UMIN alum and teaches in the state university system. <clears throat> and she puts together a discussion idea um, that's kin, akin to one by Mo Jansen, who you'll see that one later, of having students get five students to post initially, and there's a particular structure to it. Okay, post coughing, I'm back. After the five initial students post, given the structure that she set out, the rest of the students in the class, and these are philosophy classes, post in reply. The original post, I'll end with a question. That's something that the responses take up and then investigate further with more text and more questions. Another piece we've shared there is by Emily Pittinger um, talking about an online health class where students discuss significant issues in health care. And they use completely online groups or teams to do this and make use of discussion forums where um, the students and the team sort out the materials they've read, come up with some uh, Again, scripted set of uh, responses. It's not scripted, it's templated. Um, and share those with others. And in the sharing, they build a capacity for learning and knowing more as they go on to write some grants. We've shared an excerpt here of the article where she sets out how she has students work in teams. And the third piece I've shared is a summary, a synopsis of work by Vanessa Paz Denon who's uh, thought a bit about discussion in terms of quality, quantity, and a more reflective synthesizing approach. So helping people think about grading and getting students to pay attention to what they have learned through a reflective practice that sends them back to look at discussion forums and think about what they learned, where they learned, how they learned, what they resisted. 
So again, it's a complex, a nice um, 